Hey guys, welcome in my video. Today I would like to show you how you can use cryptocurrency wallet to generate signatures for messages. I think this is a quite useful feature because it lets you to use a private key which is stored in secure way inside the wallet to generate the signature. So your user can put a unique signature for the specific message and then inside your application you are able to validate that actually owner of that particular address generated the signature. And this is quite useful if you would like to create an authentication system in which the owner of the um, Ethereum address can get basically authenticate themselves just by by issuing um, the signatures because you are able to validate on the back end without uh, using any fancy stuff. You are able just to use um, plain old cryptographic uh, functions to just validate that this signature was generated by a specific user. And also you can make sure that this user make a signature for the specific message. So we have message, signature, and the signer and in this particular example the signer is the current account inside the metamask wallet so here we have the very simple react.js component all we have here is uh, just a regular form by the way if you would like to check this code yourself you have the link in the description so you can just um, see exactly what you have here code sandbox is prepared for you uh, and here we have the form which is um, which we can submit and right now nothing fancy happens because we just have here one handler handle sign and this um, function all it does it um, calls the set um, the sign message function and this sign message function right now just console logs the message that we typed in here into that form so nothing fancy but right now we would like to ask the user the cryptocurrency user to actually use their metamask to generate the signature so in order to do that uh, we need to uh, first of all check if the um, actually cryptocurrency extension is presented in in the browser all you have to do is check the window.ethereum if it's uh, undefined or it's false then we know that user is not crypto user and all, all we have to do is just uh, terminate the execution of our code and throw some error or ask the user to basically install the cryptocurrency wallet so once we have the um, once we are sure that actually wallet is inside the browser we can ask for the permission so our application our origin can use that um, wallet and we uh, all we have to do is just issue that command window.ethereum send and then uh, the cryptocurrency wallet will ask us for the permission so the user all he has to do is just accept this permission and once we are sure that we have the permission and the cryptocurrency wallet is present, then it's a perfect time to use our uh, library Ethers. And this um, library lets you communicate with the blockchains and do some cryptographic stuff whatever you want with the Ethereum blockchain. So right now we are initiating the provider um, variable and then we should get the signer. So basically we need to get this currently locked in user here into the metamask and all we have to do is uh, first call the provider uh, get signer and secondly we need to ask that signer to actually sign the message and the message can be signed using the private key which is of course stored in the secure way inside the metamask so the um, private key never leaves the wallet wallet um, inside um, just takes the message generates the signature and returns to us signature once we have signature we can also get the signer address because I think that would be also useful information for us and once we have the message signature and address we will just return it to our application and what happens next is we have here um, the loop uh, in which we I'm just displaying all the signatures that were generated with our app so I will save the code and right now let's try how the application works so here we have this um, this form and uh, we will try to generate um, the first signature so let's write here test sign message 
and you can see that MetaMask actually asked us to sign um, the, the, the message and here is the message test. And what is very important is that actually whenever you ask MetaMask to generate signature, you are not interacting with the blockchain. You are not issuing any transaction. So generating signatures is costing you nothing. You don't have to pay any gas fees or any stuff like that because we are just asking for simple crypto graphic operation. So basically the wallet takes the private key, takes the message and is able to generate the signature. And then in our app, we can validate the signature because uh, we don't have to use any private key. We have to use just the public key, which is in Ethereum world, the address of the signer. So we have all the information that we can use for actually validating, verifying the signature. So if we click the sign, you can see that we have the message one, which is test, the signer, which is the address of currently locked in user. And here we can have, uh, we can see the signature. So if I would generate the signature again with the sign message, you can see that we have exactly the same signature because we have the same message and the same signer. However, if I would write here test one and I would generate the sign message, then you can see that the signature is completely different. Uh, so uh, just one uh, character here completely changes the signature and it's really, really hard to compute um, such a signature without knowing the private key. So that's why that's the um, evidence that we cannot uh, temper that signature. So in order to generate that signature, we need to have the private key and we uh, always generate the, the same signature for the same message. However, let's see uh, what will happen if I would uh, try to sign the test one message with completely different account. So right now I can change the account to account one. And if I would click the sign message, we see that right now we have the different account, uh, test message one and sign. And you can see that we have entirely different signature. So the message is the same, but the signer is different. The private key is different. So the si signature is completely uh, different. And now I think it's a perfect moment to um, create the same component, which let us to verify the signatures. And I think the verifying signatures is super cool because it lets us to build systems like authentication or secure uh, messaging app, because then we are sure that some message was not sent by some hacker, but we are know that this uh, particular message was signed by the owner of uh, the specific account. And this is uh, very useful because you know, whenever you have the crypto wallet, usually you have some funds inside your wallet. So you want to keep your all the keys secure. And that's super great because uh, then you have the proof that the owner of the certain smart contract or the owner of the certain amount of the ether or owner of some NFT is the person which put the signature on the message. And you can use that for authentication or checking some stuff in your application because that's really simple. All you have to do is just use the util function from eaters. So now we'll do um, that uh, inside our React code. I will just enable the component I preferred for you. It's called verify message. And all it does, it actually takes these three things that we are generating in the first component. So uh, we have uh, the message, we have the address of the signer, and we have the signature. And all these three uh, things we'll just put into the verify message function. And that verify message uh, function, all it does, it um, awaits the asynchronous function from the eaters library, which lets us verify the message. And this function verify message takes message and the signature, and it returns the address of the creator of the signature. And of course, if something is wrong, so if the message was, it's not matching the signature, or the signature is wrong, uh, then we 
cannot validate that the signer address is the same address that we actually provided to our checker function. And then we will return the false from the verify message um, function. Uh, of course, if um, the signer address is the same address of um, the one uh, that, that we are passing to this function, then we are returning uh, true. Otherwise, we are catching some errors, we are displaying them in the console, and then we are returning false from that uh, function. And here is a very simple React component with the asynchronous function handle verification. Then we have the is valid um, flag. If everything's fine with the signature, we are showing the success message. And if something is wrong, we are just informing that the signature is invalid. So let's see that very simple um, component in action in our simple application. I will refresh that. And now we can generate a new message. Of course, it will be the test. Uh, we can write sign message. Uh, MetaMask is asking us about generating the signature and we have the first signature. So I will copy the test, uh, test. Then I will copy the signature, the signature and the signer. And of course, we will pass it to our function. And right now, if we click the verify signature, you s we see that signature is actually valid. So everything is fine. But now let's change the message. So let's act like a hacker. So the hacker just have the signature that was generated by this guy. Uh, but actually, um, the hacker tries to give us the wrong signature, um, because uh, the, the message is uh, different. Uh, so I'm not testing. And if I write here, I'm not testing and we have the verify signature, you can see that signature is invalid. So uh, the same we can do with the signature. So the test, uh, the test uh, is the same, the signature is valid. However, if we change here, just one character inside the signature, of course, the signature is um, completely different for different uh, message uh, by different signer. And if we click the um, verify signature, we see that the signature is invalid and our application shouldn't accept that. So, um, so we can uh, change that, uh, of course, into the B. And uh, let's say uh, we will put here completely different address. So I will copy um, the valid address, but actually different my second testing address. And if I would copy it here, then you can see that the signature is wrong again. And if we sign the message again with this second account, we would see that okay, the test message uh, and the signature is completely different, we can change it. And the signature is again valid. So you can see that the graphy is great. We can use cryptography in order to make sure that the owner of the certain address put the signature on the certain te uh, text. And of course, um, if we want to implement authentication in our application, we can uh, just write the message something like, uh, please uh, sign me up with email um, test at test.com. And if we generate the, the signature, uh, then we uh, can verify on our backend on in our application that the owner of the certain address um, just wants to sign up with our application, then we can check that on the backend. And if everything is fine, we can just create um, the record in the database. So thank you guys for your attention. If you have some questions, uh, I highly recommend you to ask them in the comment section below. If you would like to check this code on your own, you also have the link to that code sandbox. So you can just log into the very same application I'm in right now and you can experiment with all this stuff yourself. So take care and see you on this channel.